This is Rich Hines with WSU Extension. I'm pleased to welcome everybody to WSU at Pike Place Market. This is an exciting event that we're having here this evening where we're bringing together WSU faculty members, the researchers, and the extension professionals with the people from communities who they work with to make our state better, to improve our quality of life, to bring us fresh local food, and to protect our water quality and our environment. And we're just so pleased that you're here with us tonight and we hope you have a wonderful time. Hi, this is Sophie Gilbert with 4-H Network News and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Linda Fox, the Dean and Director of Washington State University Extension. We're here at the Pike Place Market for a first-time event showcasing the excellence of the research and extension programs of Washington State University, uh, the College of Agriculture, Human and Natural Resource Sciences, and WSU Extension. All around me, you hear the hubbub of the partners who are beneficiaries of our work and they're meeting and talking with the fine faculty and staff of our programs. Some of the programs we showcase include the 4-H program like yours. Thank you. Here's another faculty member from WSU. It's uh, really wonderful to be here tonight. We see all of these wonderful uh, interactions between the extension professionals that are working with uh, all these people that are doing some very interesting things, new foods, new agricultural products, and, and just, uh, uh, just really an exciting event having so much uh, going on and, and, and so many new products and, 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 and innovations right here in front of us. It's just, just, just great. Hi, my name is Kim Patton from WSU Long Beach. I run the, the research station, Extension Research Station down there. <clears throat> I work with the cranberry industry and I work with the shellfish industry, the oyster industry in particular, uh, solving uh, the, the industry problems. We're partnering here with the, the, both the local cranberry industry and the shellfish industry. Uh, we're featuring a dried cranberry product, which uh, is a delicious uh, cranberry. It's going to be sort of the wave of the future, and uh, we're just putting in a brand new, or Ocean Spray is putting in a brand new plant down in Aberdeen area, $20 million plant, which will handle all the, the cranberries on the west coast. Uh, this is uh, the, the wave of the future for the industry. I would like to introduce to you Sharon and Glenn Thompson. Hello, um, we're cranberry growers here to support WSU program for our uh, Kim Patton, who is the one that is in charge of uh, research and so forth for cranberry growers. And we are very, very thankful for Kim that uh, he helps us so much in our growing of cranberries. And uh, I'd like my husband to talk a little bit about that. Well, you ask about our partnership. Uh, the growers have purchased the land down at Long Beach, and we have an experiment station with uh, several uh, varieties of cranberries so we can test to see how well they'll produce. And we also have a lot of trials on different uh, products that we use in the cranberry business. So we have a very strong partnership with uh, the uh, WSU, and Kim Patton is our lead down there and uh, does an excellent job for us. But without the support of this, uh, the cranberry growers would certainly be a hurting bunch of farmers. Now at our experiment station, we uh, have uh, several plots of cranberries. Uh, we have walking chairs, and uh, you can bring your family down there and really see what cranberries are all about. And uh, you'll be able to see the different products that we're uh, dealing with down there and how they work and, uh, and how they actually, uh, we actually pick that bog. We'll be picking it in uh, October here. And that's just a voluntary thing where a bunch of farmers get together and pick all those bogs down there that were used in the raised cranberries. That money goes back into the research station. So it's a, quite a partnership we've formed with uh, WSU. And, and uh, it's a family-oriented journey if you want to go down there. There's a museum, shows our tools that we use, past and present. And uh, it's a great place to go for a vacation. Stop by and see us. Thank you. Dave Eliason with the WSU Small Farms Program, and I work on small farms issues such as uh, pest control, pest management issues that are um, that are critical to organic growers. I try to come up with new strategies to help 
solve these problems that are normally done by with chemical control. And we try to come up with ways that non-chemical control methods. And the other thing we do is we also do an education series where we're teaching new farmers about cultivating success programs, where we're teaching them farming practices that are and or, organic farming practices. And we also um, do a, a series with working with the tilt producers of Washington on what is called the uh, a farm walk, and where we get farmers together and talk about practices that are going on on a particular host farm and try to get people to collaborate and talk about how they solve problems there and try to continue to get the um, this knowledge that has been farmer based for a long time and continue, continue it on to the next generation. Hi, my name is David Granistein. I work for the Washington State University Center for Sustaining Agriculture and Natural Resources. I'm based in Wenatchee, Washington, and I work on many different projects across the state and also in other parts of the region and country. Some of the kinds of things that I've been working on include uh, supporting the tremendous expansion of organic farming that's happening in the state, uh, working on our climate-friendly farming, program at Washington State uh, trying to look at how agriculture can interact with some of the greenhouse gas issues and that starts to spill over into bioenergy. There's lots of relationships there. I've also worked on eco-labeling and was one of the founders of the Food Alliance. So we've been working at how we communicate to consumers the wonderful things that farmers are doing on their land for the good of everybody. Hello, I'm Mike Brownfield. I'm a manager of a family farm in central Washington, a Brownfield Orchard. And uh, we grow a lot of different organic tree fruits, but especially apples. Um, here we have the Honeycrisp variety, Gala varieties, and Ginger Gold variety. All of these have been harvested within the last, uh, oh, three weeks or so. And um, we do work with WSU in some research, and we've also benefited a lot from the research that they have done in um, pest control technologies as well as uh, fertility management. We, as a farm, do some direct marketing to retailers on, the, uh, on this side of the mountains over here in the I-5 corridor, and um, we have been involved with organics for a long time, and, and this is how we like to grow fruit. Um, we've benefited from Jay Bruner's uh, program uh, looking at uh, codling moth mating disruption. Uh, it is something that uh, utilizes no poisons whatsoever. It strictly utilizes uh, pheromones, a sense that the moths themselves uh, put out, and an area we put up dispensers of these pheromones which floods the orchard air with that scent and confuses the moths and prevents them from mating uh, successfully. It has been very helpful for us in uh, maintaining an orchard that is 99.9% .9 free from this pest and has helped us grow fruit that uh, can stay clean without uh, utilizing sprays. This is Pamela Roberts with 4-H Network News and I'm here with Jay Bruner. And Jay, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm an entomologist with Washington State University and I work at the Tree Fruit Research and Extension Center in Wenatchee and work on managing insect pest problems in orchards. And our, our goal is to work with the fruit industry, our, our main clientele, our partners, and help them develop the best practices possible to protect their fruit in ways that also protect the environment and human health. And so you're here tonight during a partnership uh, exposition here at the Pike Place Market, and what do you hope to take away from this event? Well, uh, the main reason I came was to support a partner that we have who produces organic apples, and Mike Brownfield. He, he works, uh, has an orchard up near Chelan, Washington, 
And like all organic growers, uh, he uses uh, pheromones or mating disruption to control a key pest, codling moth, which is the worm that gets in the fruit. And without this technology, they wouldn't be able to produce a, a crop that they could harvest and sell. So we've developed the technology, the understanding how to use it, and they're actually implementing it. And he's showing and, and giving apples tonight to people that are basically the product of this technology. And that is a wonderful example of a partnership with WSU. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Joe Beisch from Brennan, Washington, over in Jefferson County. Uh, my wife Joy and I came to the event tonight to help serve, uh, primarily because we hold uh, food handler cards from Jefferson County. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, and one of the things you observe at a, at a function like this, is the, um, the, 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 the special spirit that WSU uh, seems to always bring to the table when you do something like this. Uh, I haven't been involved with WSU Extension very long, but it has been a terrific experience uh, collaborating with several um, different entities in and around WSU to make th the things that we try to do happen. And um, you can't be uh, you can't be anything but impressed with the the people and the spirit with which WSU um, infects the community. I'm here with Bon Appetit. We are very big on sustainable future. So we all, always order our produce and our, as much stuff as we can from local farmers, organic farmers. We bring in whatever we can that's local. We get our grass-fed beef and uh, anything and everything to help the planet, pretty much. <laughs> My name is Chad Sheldon, and uh, I partner. Uh, I work with the Army Reserve uh, Child and Youth Services, and uh, this is part of a partnership with WSU um, Extension, Army National Guard, Army Reserve. Uh, we do programs for um, teens, youth, uh, to do outreach because there's extension offices in every county, so um, we're able to reach out to more uh, youth throughout the state and um, do programs and uh, services for those families. Uh, throughout the entire state of Washington. Hello, this is Kerry Roos, and we're at the WSU Week at uh, the Pike Place Market and the partnership event. And you've probably already heard from Chad Sheldon, the partner in the Operation Military Kids program. The reason the partnerships are so important for the Operation Military Kids program is that we're working with the military kids' youth um, who are have deployed parents who go to Middle East and the youth are here at home and they need some assistance. So we're real pleased with that partnership between National Guard and the Army Reserve. I'm Megan Reby and I'm Director of Development for WSU Extension and Director of the Washington State 4-H Foundation and we're very excited to be here tonight and, and very excited for all of our partners that are here tonight and, uh, and the people that are friends of Extension that help us in so many ways. Megan, you have been instrumental in establishing more partnerships with the Foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The Foundation, first of all, has been very uh, trying very hard to re-establish partnerships with our counties. Uh, and, and communicate more about what the foundation does and also to bring corporate and, and private foundation partners in to support 4-H and as well as individuals that uh, we may have lost touch with over the years. So those are just some of the things that we're working on. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do for 4-H. Tell us about the partnership that you have with the farming community. Okay, Sophie, uh, my name is uh, Richard Doggerty. Uh, I spend my time working with uh, people who manufacture or produce food products of all types, uh, especially from the time once it leaves the farm, from the time and from there until it gets to the consumer. The partnerships that we've had have been, not, have been sometimes with the growers, uh, 
trying us helping them to add some value to their uh, raw materials i worked with uh with seafood folks um, in uh, solving uh, uh regulatory issues with them we help folks uh develop products uh, just whatever it takes to get the raw materials in the hands of the consumers <laughs> We spend an awful lot of time with uh, food safety, especially uh, training of the, of the uh, people that are involved with harvesting, with, uh, involved with um, the manufacturer every step along the way. We're standing here in the Pike Street Market. It's just a wonderful celebration for WSU tonight. We're sitting here, we're meeting with community people. There are people from our faculty. It's really an opportunity to see the university engage with the people of these of this state like it should be. And whatever you do tonight, make sure you make it all the way around here. Eat something, drink something, remember that the university helped it make it happen in your community. My name is Andrea Meyer and I work with WSU King County Extension. I started with Extension in late spring and I came to Extension after studying English and then getting into the restaurant industry. I actually came in as an intern working on the food system and small farms project and have now morphed into a position as event coordinator. Um, I come into Extension bringing mostly skills of communication, particularly writing skills, um, but I've worked a lot in customer service and so I'm able to come to comfortably communicate with the public. I got to know Maria because I am coordinating the Harvest Celebration Farm Tour and she's one of the farms on the tour and she also went through our Cultivating Success Program which helps give new farmers the resources to become farmers. All right, I'm Maria Brenneman and I am a farmer at TNM Berry Farm um, and I met Andrea through um, the WSU Extension because I was looking for another way to advertise our products and also um, another way to grow our business. And she also has answered numerous questions that I have had about um, anything from um, advertising to regulations to who else to go to about weed questions. She's been a great help and a great um, liaison for me to find other sources of information. Viticulture Specialist in Prosser, Washington, uh, statewide responsibilities uh, for wine grapes and juice grapes for the entire state. WSU has had a long partnership with the grape and wine industry in the state all the way from the very beginning with Walt Clore, who came in 1930s, in the 19, late 1930s, and started planting grapes in the valley and throughout Washington state. Uh, we can, we continue that partnership working with a number of small wineries and large wineries um, in the state, and our projects continue to help growers throughout the, throughout the state. Hi, could you share with us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing for the WSU? Sure. My name is Chris Fiza, and I've been with WSU for 26 years as a faculty member, and currently I'm the director of the Center for Sustaining Agriculture and Natural Resources. What we do there is promote sustainability, research, education, outreach, and teaching. And uh, so that means that we are working for to help farmers be profitable and survive. Um, and and uh, we're also trying to build a healthier environment. And, um, and so events like this, which uh, feature local farmers and local products, are extremely important for the uh, viability of agriculture. And, uh, that's what we're all about. Hi, my name is Kristen Michelle Wagner, graduate 2005. Hi, my name is Chris Peterson. <laughs> I came here tonight because I was emailed by the Alumni Association and I really wanted to support the College of Agricultural and Natural Research Sciences because my department of apparel merchandising and textiles falls under that. And yeah. I, I really enjoyed the food this evening. Um, I noticed that a lot of um, a lot of alumni made the food for the event, not necessarily food from uh, the Pullman region. 
but uh, food from around local farmers around here. And WSU extensions. And WSU extensions. Yeah. So I'm Bob Simmons, director of our Mason County WSU Extension Office. And uh, I'm at this event here with Pike Place Market and our College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. And uh, here to talk about some of the great things that are this college, this university is bringing to Mason County. We have a small farms program there that helps our agricultural producers increase our competitive edge and create products and do some value added processing to make things profitable and marketable. As well as um, I work in water resources and a lot of that is hinged on the relationship between land stewardship and water quality. And so we work with the farmers also to ensure that water quality is protected. And in Mason County we're one of the number one shellfish production areas in the country. So, uh, so a lot's at stake. If our water quality goes down, a lot of our economy is tied to that, as well as kind of our heritage and, and our culture in Mason County. So natural resources is a critical part of Mason County, and uh, I'm glad to be part of WSU's efforts to make them sustainable in the future. Hi, my name is Drew Zimmerman. And I'm a uh, volunteer cooperator at the WSU Research Station in Mount Vernon. I'm working with the food horticulturist there, uh, Gary Moulton, on a cider apple trial program. We've taken apples uh, from France and England that are grown only to make a hard cider beverage. You don't eat these apples. They're bitter and astringent and woody, and you spit them out. But when you express the juice from them and ferment that juice, you make a wonderful full body product that has uh, an astringent finish much the way uh, red wine does. So uh, what we're doing is, is we're growing these apples to see what kind of, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, <laughs> to, to see how well they grow in the Puget Sound region. The, the climate in southern England and northern France is very similar to Puget Sound. So theoretically, their, their apples that they've grown there for centuries should do well here, and surprise, they do. They're also quite disease resistant. But then, if we can grow these trees and grow these apples, what the heck are we going to do with them? We can't eat them. So we make varietal ciders from them. And uh, from these ciders, we try and determine the characteristic that that apple brings to the, to the cider. Unlike wine grapes, cider apples don't make a very good varietal product. They're unbalanced, they're missing elements, each variety. So what you do is, is, is if you identify the characteristic of that apple, uh, you can uh, mix and blend those to make uh, any kind of product that uh, you may have. So what I've done as a result of this research is I've had the opportunity to uh, partner with a couple of folks in a cidery and a winery uh, in the Skagit Valley. And from the work we've done there at the station, I'm able to uh, produce a couple of products. One, uh, it's okay if I hold this up. One of them that's a, uh, uh, made from dessert apples, uh, mainly Jonagold, which is a signature apple in the Skagit. And uh, another one that is, uh, Kind of getting low here, uh, but it's made from the bittersweet apples from uh, from Europe and uh, uh, aged in a in a barrel. So I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> what I have to say. If you're interested in uh, uh, learning about hard cider, uh, contact or, or take a look at the WSU Mount Vernon uh, uh, website. There, there's uh, quite a bit of information. Information. Also, there are some bulletins available that uh, we published. Hard cider was once our national beverage. Uh, from colonial times up into through about the 1850s, there was more cider drunk per capita than all other liquids combined, including water. One of the problems with water was that uh, we didn't have municipal water sources, and you could get deathly ill from drinking water. There was cholera, there was typhoid, there was amoeba, dysentery, other illnesses. But you know, the, the cider that people made from their homestead farms and orchards, because it had a small amount of alcohol in it, maybe four, five, six percent, bacteria couldn't live in it. So the cider was always healthy. Actually, they used it as the family beverage. They used it to trade as a commodity to, to give to the doctor for delivering the, the twins or the goat or the calf. Uh, they got, you know, two chickens and a pig and a, uh, a bushel of corn for a half barrel of cider. And everybody drank it. Guests did, kids did, the family did. Uh, 
when they were done with the cider or if the cider level got too low in the barrel, it would turn to vinegar. And then they'd use that to uh, preserve their, their food. At the, during the 1850s, the Germans started immigrating into the United States and they started making beer. We also started at that time transitioning from an agricultural society to an urban society. And beer was a lot easier to, to deal with. Uh, during the uh, uh, temperance movement that actually started about then too, uh, soft drinks became popular. Carbonated water came in, they did soda fountain beverages, it became uh, unfashionable to drink alcohol, and cider slowly kind of went by the wayside. Its death knell was in the 20s when the uh, prohibition came in and the uh, uh, temperance ladies went out and sliced down the, or axed down the cider orchards, and they, they never came back since. So, uh, one of the things I'd like to do is to try and restore a bit of that history uh, and bring back a product that uh, apparently not our parents or our grandparents, but our, probably our grandparents' grandparents grew up on. My name is Joy Beisch, and I am with uh, WSU Extension, Jefferson County, and uh, we are, my husband and I are the coordinators for the Gates uh, Grant Connecting Schools and Communities. One of the reasons that we came tonight is that as the usual um, atmosphere around WSU, everything is a collaboration and a partnership, and we love participating. Our heart is in this because our students have a student-run business, and it's an aquaculture business. My husband and I also have a nursery and a bed and breakfast, and we grow um, organically many, many berries and uh, fruits. So this is uh, this has a, a very strong um, tug to our hearts, and the kids would love to be here, but unfortunately, it's a school night. Part of our Gates Initiative is the. Uh, the uh, aquaculture business, we have corporate mentors, uh, Coast Oyster, but primarily Taylor United Shellfish, and they have helped us, um, along with the Washington State Fish and Wildlife, who have leased us the land that we have, which is four and a half, four and a half acres on Quilcene Bay. The students have cleaned their beaches, they have seeded their beaches, and they are harvesting their beaches. They've done all of the the necessary um, things that any farmer would do in analyzing their product, analyzing their land, and determining what is best for the, the characteristics of the substrate that the oysters are and clams are being grown on. So the students are right now really excited about the fact that they have done their first two harvests and they have just planted a million vanilla clams and they have just planted 9,000 oysters and they are planting another 91,000 oysters in the next uh, two weeks. So we're anxious to see what the harvest brings next year. My name's Leslie Zenz and um, I, used to, uh, I used to work with the Washington State Department of Agriculture um, and in that job, I collaborated, I collaborated a lot with WSU and a, a multitude of other partners um, on different um, sustainable agriculture projects, mostly around marketing, and <laughs> Mike, he's, he's one of them. <laughs> anyway, so in my position there, I, um, I learned very quickly the importance of collaboration and bringing in multiple partners for any project, you know, whether you're in the agriculture field or you're working, you know, in, in business or um, anything like that, uh, bringing in multiple different partners with different ideas, experiences, backgrounds. It's always um, a really, it adds strength to any project that you do. Here's one who tried to get away. Can you tell us what you do? Uh, sure, you caught me. My name's Mike Hackett. I work for WSU Extension. Uh, we work with the beef producers. Uh, it's called Cascade Range Beef. We also work with the Puget Poultry Cooperative. That's grass-fed, pasture-raised poultry uh, raised locally. We teach the people how to raise the, the poultry, uh, we teach them how to market them, and we help them find markets as well. Um, so, what else? We work with um, chefs to to gain the uh, their confidence that they can buy local and it's good healthy food, sustainably raised, all of that great stuff. 
and I'm glad to see Washington State University moving that way. And uh, I'm proud to say I'm one of the people that helped make that happen. It has been a great event, and, and we hope to have this annually. It's been a smashing success. A uh, lot of people put a tremendous amount of work into this event, and we're very appreciative. Not only the WSU faculty and staff that have been so important, but uh, most importantly, the, the producers uh, and the food service providers that have really given up their time to make this uh, a very special event for WSU. Uh, hi, I'm Zachary Lyons. I'm the event coordinator for uh, the WSU at Pike Place Market event uh, in its first year. I was successful. I, I, I keep running into people. I met a, a young woman who just graduated uh, recently from UC Davis in food sciences. Even the, even the insects are happy. Uh, the uh, graduate from uh, UC Davis in food sciences, and she heard about this event. She came here to learn what Washington State University is doing. She's working as a food scientist at uh, Darigal. And she was just uh, really excited. I, I saw her out uh, talking with you know one faculty member after another. Um, I had a whole bunch of people say, "Wow, I've been just learning so much here." So yeah, and you know we had the, the chefs from the chefs collaborative here in Seattle put great food together using the ingredients from the farmers that we had paired with the faculty. So it was Washington ingredients that benefited from Washington State University research. I'm Rich Hines with WSU Extension Development and I am just so excited. The event has gone really well this evening. The level of, of conversations that people have been having has just been so exciting. In-depth discussions about everything from coddling moth to grass-fed beef to salmon and water quality and uh, the interactions that community members have had and WSU faculty have had with participants has just been incredible. And I think we're very pleased with, with the results and hope that everyone had a wonderful time.